Good morning, crypto Twitter, it's Miss T. Crypto spreading crypto without you showing this beneficial to my generation. Shout out to all my people, Gen C needs to be included. It's really that simple. We are savage, amazed, possessed, making money at the same time. Spread peace. I feel empty if you don't include Gen Z. Better change the world, so y'all better get ready. Miss T. Crypto, I'm never backing down. I got a wax account. You used to say it. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Miss Teen Crypto Show. I hope you guys are having a lovely day today. I, you know, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling the zest. If you guys are feeling the zest, please throw some hundred emojis in the chat right now. And before, as always, before we get started, I'm going to shout out three amazing sponsors of the Miss Teen Crypto Show. First being Wax Blockchain, absolutely killing the game. If you're looking for fee-less and fast transactions with NFTs, Wax Blockchain is the spot. If you're looking to, and to trade and earn some Wax NFTs, then the second spot you're going to head to is NFTblocks.com. They're killing the game as well. Third, we have Ballet, amazing wallets, been using them for years now. If you guys actually want to enter to win one of these amazing Ballet wallets, stay tuned during the show because our zesty guest today will shout out a word that you guys will enter in the chat and I will roll the dice to see who wins. If you win, please send me a DM on twitter.com slash Crypto. Send me your email and I'll hook you up with the Ballet team. If you guys are new to the channel, what's up? My name is Miss Teen Crypto. It's nice to see you. Please smash the like, subscribe, and share this stream out with friends since we are not streaming on Twitter today. Please share this out thank you so much i will throw a free nft in the chat if we hit 15 likes i'll put another now let's talk to today's zesty guest colin pape ceo of pre-search welcome to the show how are you hey randy i'm great thank you so much for having me on i'm really excited to have you here and talk more about pre-search um and about you as well do you mind talking about like before you found crypto and before pre-search what you were up to yeah, yeah, for sure. So, so I'm not a teenager anymore, and uh, <laughs> I've I've been around uh, for for a while. But I started uh, doing web development and programming when I when I was back in my teens. So this was like late '90s, wow, early 2000s. Yeah, I've, I've been around for a while, and uh, I remember the internet before these walled gardens. You know, Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and uh, all the other centralized platforms kind of took over the web. And there was just this amazing uh, feeling of, of, you know, freedom and openness. And uh, even though, you know, the network effects weren't there. And so it was, uh, you know, a little harder to find stuff. You had all these just communities flourishing all over the place without gatekeepers. And uh, so that was kind of, you know, my introduction to the Internet. And uh, eventually, uh, Google and, and many other uh, big tech platforms came along and uh, started really to dominate the web. And uh, over the past 20 years, we've really seen them uh, just, just, you know, uh, getting to this point where, I mean, 92% of all searches are done through Google now. And uh, the number two search engine is also owned by Google, which is YouTube. A lot of people don't realize that. And there's a lot of power that has been put into uh, the hands of uh, this, this centralized entity. Uh, so, uh, you know, 2011, I ended up having this like weird run in with Google through my other business, shopcity.com. We ended up uh, actually getting a whole bunch of uh, media exposure. And uh, we participated in this uh, an FTC investigation into some monopolistic practices that were going on. And, no uh, way. We ended up, yeah, it was it was pretty wild. So wow. So you, how did how did you like do your research with Google and things like that? Like how did how did you like get into this? I'm, I'm so intrigued. Yeah. So so I I mean uh, before Google, the days before Google, there were all these other search engines, and honestly, like Google took off because it was good. It had you know the most complete uh, long tail index, kind of just about any weird thing that you would look up. They'd have great results. And uh, 
I became an early advocate for Google and, and, you know, steered a lot of people in that direction. My early websites, I put a, a Google search field at the top. This was before, you know, a lot of people even knew about them. And, uh, you know, in, I, I was always more, uh, aligned, uh, with decentralization from the local standpoint, I've always viewed, uh, kind of, you know, centralized economies and, uh, you know, the reliance on, on, you know, national currencies that are created by these, uh, federal reserve banks and central banks, uh, as being one of the, the, the big, you know, uh, kind of, uh, points of, of, uh, centralization and control and i always viewed it as hey if we had all these like really independent strong local economies that potentially had local currencies that was kind of my intro really to to crypto i was approaching it more from how would we create local currencies yeah and um so so my other business shopcity.com is basically it's like a network of local marketplaces so we we bought all these domain names like 20 years ago so we have shopnewyork.com shopboston.com shop just about everywhere.com and it's like a, a platform where local businesses can go on they can create an online store and you have this ability to basically have a co op marketing campaign for your local businesses. And so what happened there, we launched in Mountain View, which is where Google is uh, located. We happened to get in with the city government and the Chamber of Commerce and the local newspaper, the Mountain View Voice, and they were launching shopmountainview.com. And uh, so we, we thought, OK, hey, great, let's, you know, kind of get things up and running. And then uh, Google, around the same time, launched this thing called the Get Your City Online campaign. It was very similar. And then next thing we know, we wake up in the middle of July. This was going back 2011. But all of our sites are on page eight of Google, even if you search for them by name. What? And so we're like, oh, that's weird, <laughs> right? Yeah, and, that's uh, super fishy. It, 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 you know, ultimately, <laughs> uh, they admitted in that article that, uh, that I showed uh, that they assessed a manual penalty against our sites. And uh, so that was really what kind of got the wheels turning for me. I just realized, man, these guys have so much power. And if you're not in Google, then they have the ability basically to erase you from the internet. And uh, so I started thinking about how we could create uh, uh, more kind of, you know, a Switzerland of search was, was how I initially conceived of research. And so 2013, 2014, built a prototype for it, uh, but didn't wow, really see super like an, early. It was early, yeah. Uh, and it didn't really see like an awesome go to market strategy though. And like Google has such huge, you know, a huge moat around that uh, business. And, and, you know, they've got the number one uh, search engine, obviously, but they also have the number one email service with Gmail. They have the number one mobile operating system with Android, the number one browser with Chrome, number one mapping system with Google maps. And it goes on and on. And uh, so it kind of like stayed on the back burner. And then in 2017, I got introduced to Ethereum and realized, oh my gosh, this is amazing. We could do so many amazing things here. We could basically crowdfund this uh, effort so that we didn't go down the same path that Google did, which is you know taking money from VCs and getting into the Wall Street game and, and all that kind of stuff. So we could crowdfund it. We could then basically reward people for searching on it and, and incentivize them to switch. And then we could close the loop on the token ecosystem by mandating payment for the advertising platform in free tokens. So we ended up uh, getting connected with the founding lawyer for Ethereum, a guy named Addison, a uh, dude out of Toronto, amazing guy, programmer who went back to school to become a lawyer. He helped us uh, get everything <laughs> up and running, did our crowd sale, and then, you know, been at it for five years now. Wow. So when was like, what, so when was pre-search originally launched? This was 2014 or 2015 by the time everything uh, was it, done. It was, it was like January, 2014 when it first went live. If you go wow. into archive.org, the, the, the initial domain, it was uh, P R E S E A R dot C H, which is the Swiss domain extension. You can go back and, and see what it looked like. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, it was essentially kind of like similar to how it is now. Uh, but without its own actual kind of search engine. And it, basically the, the initial concept for it was that it would be like a federated search field mm -hmm. so that you could have this search field where you could easily direct your query into a whole bunch of different search engines and different search resources. And, you know, ultimately trying to make it so that Google doesn't have the stranglehold that they currently do and that people could really easily switch between different search engines. Because ultimately to me, like this is all about choice and it is about 
uh, you know, decentralization in the truest sense. And I, I always find it funny when people are like, oh, yeah, you know, one currency to rule them all decentralization. Yeah. It's like, no, there should be many currencies, there should be many search engines, there should be many of everything, because otherwise, we end up in this same kind of, you know, monopoly paradigm that we've wound up in. Exactly. And so when you go on pre-search, like you could literally go on presearch.com and start searching today, right? Uh, so like, so when you search, you get to pick if you want to look through Google or Bing or other things, right? Yep. So by default, uh, it, it goes to the pre-search engine, which is uh, powered by now uh, approaching 70,000 user nodes. And it's basically so like- awesome. uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's so cool that all the community members have embraced it and that uh, we've got these people all over the world that are, are running nodes. But basically, you run a search, it comes into the system, it then anonymizes your query so that it's private, and then it passes it out to you know one of these nodes. And then these nodes go out and they hit different search engines, databases, APIs. They get the information back. They combine the results. Uh, depending on kind of the term, they, they may uh, basically try to remove a bias that is existing within that, that search query. And then uh, they return the results. And then the person who operated the node gets a little bit of a pre-token. So they're earning as they're uh, you know, providing the computing resources. And then the searcher themselves, they get a little piece of uh, pre as well every time they search. So it's a, a reward and a way to basically, you know, uh, decentralize the economic value of search, which is massive. I mean, Google generates over 100 billion a year in revenue through their little keyword ads. So uh, it's a big, you know, economic driver. Are we searching to earn, Colin? Yeah, we are searching oh to earn. Oh my gosh, guys, we, we are searching to earn. That is revolutionary. And you were saying something about um, when you search there is an anonymity there. And whenever we search on Google now, everything we type in from like, you know, even if we backspace, everything we type is being recorded and being entered into a database and like into our own personal database. So they're like, oh, this person yeah. searched this, backspaced and did that. So that's not the same with pre-search. No, we don't store any of your search terms. That's really one of the, the, the key differences. Uh, you know, Google's building profiles. The, the, the thing about search is that uh, when somebody enters a query, you have what is known as transactional intent. So you know what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. Honestly, like you don't need to profile a, a user. You, you can, you know, create value for an advertiser and a sponsor just based on whatever uh, has been entered in. You don't need to build this big, uh, you know, trans web uh, profile on people. So, you know, there's no profiling going on and no tracking and, uh, we, yeah, don't store any of your queries. Wow. That that's amazing. It's like very, like, it's very freeing that like you could search something. Cause like, even if like you search something weird, like they, it, it's almost like it could get blocked or just like fishy things that are going on on like the web 1.0 like we need like or web 2.0 like we need web 3 like I feel like this do you feel like this is like the web 3 Google I feel like that's how I kind of see it yeah that, that that's how we see it and I mean it's only going to get more uh you know web 3 more decentralized in time when we wrote our original white paper we basically said hey you know this is a massive undertaking we're going to leverage uh, big tech and everything that we can to get the traction and, and really get this out there into the community's hands. And then over time, enable the community to take more and more of a role in governance and more of a role in developing the software from an open source standpoint. And so we're, we're kind of in that transition uh, right now, uh, transitioning, you know, throughout this year to a DAO and uh, enabling the community to, you know, set the guidelines and, and build out all those processes uh, to ensure that this doesn't become, uh, you know, the next Google as far as, uh, you know, the, the centralized point of control, yeah. uh, but that hopefully it can replace Google for the next generation of, of searchers and those who value privacy and freedom and who want to ultimately, I am hoping, you know, build a bit of a parallel economy, parallel uh, ecosystem where you are supporting the creators and the sponsors and the marketers that are, are being found through pre-search uh, so that uh, you're able to support, uh, you know, those who are, are supporting freedom. 
Absolutely. And when you search on pre-search, I know there's like a really cool um, way that you guys put out ads and how like I could even put up an ad or um, if I stay, I think it's if I stake enough pre, I get to like if someone searches Miss Teen Crypto, then I, I could make sure like my website comes up. Like if I stake the most pre, is that the way it works? It, exactly. Yep. Yep. We came up with something called keyword staking. That's so, so, uh, so cool. Yep. So cool. Whoever stakes the most pre to uh, the given term or phrase uh, has their ad displayed. And uh, and there's currently no charge when somebody's actually clicking. That will be the model eventually. There will be like that consumptive uh, kind of revenue that's coming back into the system. That's so the system earns pre that it can give back out as rewards. Uh, but for now, uh, there's there's no charge for it. So you stake your pre, you get your ad displayed, and there's there's no actual cost to doing that. Ooh. So what, like if someone to get, were to get started with pre-search today, what are the steps? Uh, so first thing, uh, you, you go into pre-search, create an account. So top right corner, you'll see there's a register link. Uh, once you've got that account, whenever uh, you, you are searching, if you're on a desktop, best thing is to install uh, a browser extension. You go to presearch.com slash extensions. And uh, if you're on uh, Chrome or Brave or Firefox, uh, you can install this browser extension, which will set pre-search as your, your default search engine. If you're on mobile, we have uh, uh, you know mobile apps that are on iOS and Android, oh. and you can yeah search privately uh, through the the pre-search app. Uh, if you're a, a user in the uh, uh, EU, you can basically if you're using Android, it's actually a default search option. Uh, we we got included in Android so that when you uh, fire up a new device or install Chrome, uh, it gives you a list of search engines that you can choose from. And so pre-search is is one of those there, uh, pretty easy to do. And uh, and then once you've done that, yeah, you can uh, buy pre if you want to, uh, you know, uh, become a holder and uh, stake on a node, which is is how you could. Uh, basically, we, we've got, I mean, you can run it on basically any device, but we've actually even got these little hardware devices that community members have made. They, they run on Raspberry Pi. They're called Preberries. Oh. And uh, uh, otherwise, you can install the software on your computer or you can uh, uh, fire up a virtual private server and install uh, the pre-search node software. And then as uh, uh, you do that, you stake pre to your node, and then that basically influences uh, the amount of rewards that you get when somebody runs a search that gets uh, handled by your node. And then, yeah, last thing would be if you are looking for traffic, if you are a marketer or if you've got uh, some cause that you're passionate about that you want to bring exposure to them, uh, you can stake pre against a, a keyword and have your ad displayed. When um, when you get started with the node, so what, what does the pre berry do again? Can you show it? I thought it was so cute. So what does that do again? <laughs> you plug that into your computer? Yeah, so so uh, basically, uh, you just plug in power and you plug it into uh, an Ethernet cable, uh, or in in this case, on this one, it's using uh, the, the USB C. Oh, that's uh, easy. But uh, you you just plug it into uh, the the internet, and uh, you, you've got basically a registration code, and so uh, that gets uh, entered into the system. And uh, then whenever a query comes in, it, basically what happens, somebody runs a query, it kind of hits our system and it says, uh, you know, hey, where is an available node that's close, that has high performance, is, is quick. And then it, it basically sends that out to a, a pool of nodes. And then the node will basically take that uh, query and then go execute the search and then return the results. And then uh, the, the person operating it gets, you know, a little piece of uh, a pre-token. How much does it cost? How many pre do you need uh, to run a node? How much is that in USD? So uh, currently it is 2000 pre and at current prices, which are insane because of, uh, you know, what's been going on lately over the past uh, two, three weeks. Uh, in crypto land, it's like seven, eight cents right now. Uh, so you'd be looking at about 150, 160 bucks. Uh, yeah, it's, wow. it's pretty affordable at the moment. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, that's pretty spicy. I mean, wow. Like I know, like so. There's so many nodes out there that people want to get involved in, and it's a few grands or more uh, yeah. to get a node. So this is like, I mean, I'm considerably early, I guess, um, even though you yep. guys have been around for a long time, but the nodes just started, right? 
Yep, the, the nodes, uh, we've been on testnet until uh, just about, uh, just over two weeks ago, we, we went nice. on to mainnet. So so now that the nodes are getting the, the live traffic, it's actually, and you know, we, we hear people talk about nodes all the time. And then people have started talking about real nodes that are actually doing something. <laughs> and that's really, you know, kind of what, what this is. It's not just like a financial thing where, you know, you're tying up tokens. I mean, there's that aspect of it. And, and to us, that's more about the security model. But uh, but yeah, it's actually, you know, doing work. You can see in your node dashboard, like, you know, as queries are coming in, you can't see what they are. You don't know who they are, any of that kind of thing. But you can see, oh, got another query, got another query. And was it successful or, you know, did it fail? If it was successful, then, you know, you get your uh, pre-rewards. So uh, lot, some people have lots of them. Some people are running, you know, tens or even hundreds of them. Uh, yeah, I could and, only and imagine. They, yeah, and and you know, if you don't want to do it on your actual computer, there's like these virtual private servers you can get for like you know under five bucks a month, and uh, you can install the software on there. We've got a really good community on Telegram. Uh, as well as Discord, if you go to t.me slash presearch nodes or you go to discord.presearch.com, uh, we've got this node operator community of people that are, are you know, really uh, focused on running these and they'll help you get up and up and running. There's there's full, you know, instructions and everything as well, but there's people there to help you along the way. Wow. Oh, I'm so intrigued. So where can we get pre? Uh, so pre, uh, you can, uh, if you go into coin market cap or coin gecko, you can see all the places, cool. uh, kind of big, biggest, uh, two decentralized would be Uniswap. Uh, it is ERC 20 based, uh, or KuCoin, uh, for a centralized exchange. Uh, if you're not as tech savvy, and if you're looking to use a credit card, uh, although you can only buy limited quantities, you can actually do it right through, uh, presearch.com. There's like a marketplace and you can buy cool. it through there. Uh, and it, it's then automatically right in your account. Super easy to uh, get into a, a node and everything. Wow. Ooh, that, that's really cool. So like it's very easy to get started with your node if you wanted to get involved. So I put the link to t.me slash presearch nodes into the live chat. Um, is there any other helpful link that I should send the chat to? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, uh, definitely di discord.presearch.com is another good one if you're a Discord user. Cool. Uh, and then uh, we're, we're pretty active on, on Twitter. Uh, and then I, I do a weekly update uh, that goes on to Odyssey and, uh, and YouTube every Friday at 12.30 p.m. Kind of just a state of uh, the project for the week. And uh, that's been a lot of fun. Oh, yes. Let me put the link to your YouTube channel. OK, yeah, because sure. I did see that you do um, your weekly your weekly news. Do you mind sharing when you started this and why you started it? Uh, you mean the, the, the news updates? Or... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I think we just crossed either 71 or 72 updates. So it's Woo. been, you know, over over a year. Uh, and we, we just thought, you know, like a lot of projects, they, they have kind of like a different cadence with updates and it's yeah. like monthly or quarterly. And, uh, we, we just thought, Hey, let's, let's give it a try doing it weekly. It's, it's a lot as far as, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of content, uh, to, to produce. And, uh, there's, there's a lot that, you know, it keeps the team really focused. Honestly, it keeps our cadence on like, what do we do this week? And, uh, you know, really, really, I mean, with a reasonably small team, we've been knocking out a, a lot of code and uh, uh, making a lot of progress. Uh, and it's just, yeah, kind of a cool way uh, to stay connected to the community. A lot of people make it just part of their weekly routine. Yeah. Uh, they'll watch the video and then they have their weekend. And, uh, you know, it's it's fun. That's great. Wow. I, I really like the transparency. I, I like when, you know, CEOs are, you know, chilling like they're, you're, you know, you're you're humble enough to go hang out with the crew and like give us all an update on what's going on. I absolutely love transparency like that. Ooh, speaking of fun and things to do, Ballet Wallet, do you mind sharing a keyword or phrase for our friends in the chat to enter in order to win one of these? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, keyword for today is freedom. Freedom, freedom. All right, guys, enter freedom into the chat in order to enter to win a free ballet wallet. Let me just toss that into live chat. Enter freedom. I love this. We're all about freedom in this in this chat right here. Um, too. Cool. 
So yes, I'll, I'll roll the dice in a few minutes. We'll see who our cool winner is while this is going on. What do you think about, you know, the current state of the market? Um, I know you said like, you know, basically everything took a hit, whether that's pre altcoins, Bitcoin, like how do you, because you've been in this space for quite a while. How do you, how do you feel about the state of the market? Where do you feel like we're going? Yeah, I, I mean, um, I, I think we've kind of got two futures ahead of us. One is like this dystopian Chinese social credit style future where we have central bank digital currencies and, uh, you know, these scores that are going to determine what we're able to do and, and who we're able to do it with. Uh, or we have, you know, true cryptocurrency being the, the people's money. And I, I think, you know, we're, we're faced with, uh, a, a bit of a choice. And I, I, I think, you know, ideally more and more people, uh, and, and I think, you know, we need to do like a better job as uh, a, a space and as a movement of just uh, inspiring people to really want to be a part of this movement and to move beyond, you know, it being Wall Street 2.0 and, and everything being denominated in dollars and us just focusing on, you know, what can we accumulate within the traditional uh, system using our cryptocurrency? I mean, we, we need to encourage adoption and there, there's definitely uh, some really interesting stuff that's going on. Uh, I mean, Square uh, being one of the largest point of sale systems, uh, you know, Jack Dorsey, uh, you know, he's gone all in as a Bitcoin maximalist. Yep. And I think there's going to be some really interesting things as far as actual uh, spendability of, of crypto. And I think that there's some just like really basic stuff uh, that, that could be done just to shift people's thinking from like denominating everything in dollars. That's kind of the issue. Yes. If we keep denominating everything in dollars. Exactly. Then that, like, why are we giving all the power to that legacy system and and the people who control it? What we and and so like one of the easiest things to me there there's there's a wallet uh, called Edge, the Edge wallet. Yes. And um, by default in the UI, they they denominate everything in bits, and a lot of people don't even know about bits because people talk about satoshis all the time. Yeah. Which I think are a little bit like obscure and not quite understandable and and honestly it's too small of a unit there's a hundred million satoshis in a bitcoin but there's a million bits in a bitcoin and if we even like you know just pegged right now uh, as as a user as somebody accepting bitcoin if you said hey you know what i'm gonna peg uh one bit to 10 cents which values bitcoin at a hundred thousand dollars uh, as somebody's paying you in bits, which becomes, you know, a lot better than getting like a fraction of a Bitcoin. Yeah. You know, hey, I'll give you 10,000 bits. Well, that Sounds would be a thousand bucks. Right. And then and then what we have to do do uh, beyond that is one only one more order of magnitude, ultimately, where one bit reaches one dollar parity, which is what brings Bitcoin to a million dollar yeah. value. And in doing that, then it's just like, hey, I'm not paying you dollars anymore. I'm just paying you bits. And it's like a one to one ratio. Very understandable. Uh, the math is already at a point where it's like, you know, totally possible. Like, you know, we're, we're only 5x off of that, that peg. And at the peak, we were, you know, like more than 50% of the way to that 10 cent peg. And then once we're there, like another 10x to get to like the dollar peg, I, th I think it's doable. And then we're denominating things in bits. And then we're starting to look at, okay, how many bits is that? And then that puts the power into that ecosystem. And then ultimately, I think there should be, you know, many, many different cryptocurrencies. But we, instead of, you know, coin market cap and coin gecko being denominated in dollars, they just are denominated in bits. It, to me, it's not that difficult. I could I see how so it either. can happen. I don't think so either. I'm kind of in the same boat with you. I've been saying that for a long time. Like, you know, why don't people denominate things in either Satoshi's or Bitcoin, like point something, what, like, you know, if something, something small, it's going to be point oh 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 something Bitcoin. Like it's going to be something stupid. But I do think that we, we do need to start thinking in that type of mindset. I was saying this like a year or two ago where I stopped thinking about things in terms of US dollar, right? Like mm -hmm. people are looking to sell when they make enough 
fiat out of the mm-hmm. asset they have, and whether that be Bitcoin, Litecoin, Pre, whatever, you know, mm-hmm. you can't look at it like that. You got to look at it in terms of how much Bitcoin you have. If you're selling it at X price, you're still losing that Bitcoin. Just because you gained fiat doesn't mean you like you're not losing Bitcoin as well, right? So people, I went to a conference that people were selling things but pricing them in Bitcoin. I think that this is what we need to see more of. I think, you know, maybe regardless of Bitcoin price, do you think people are going to start transacting in it peer to peer anyway, considering that we're not going to have flexibility with the banks? I don't personally, I don't feel like we're going to have the opportunity to move our funds easily soon, whether that's digitally with our cards or physically getting cash out of the bank. Uh, Do you think that people are just going to peer to peer accept this now? I, I think so. I, I think that's uh-huh. the future. And that's the way that we kind of get out of this stranglehold that uh, this, you know, legacy system, these World Economic Forum people yeah. that control the, the you know, legacy uh, uh, marketplace. Uh, and, and if we just start thinking differently, and if we do start doing more peer to peer, and we recognize, uh, I mean, we all have to, uh, as early adopters of this system, so that we can show others the way as, uh, you know, the screws kind of get put to everybody in time. They, they'll, you know, first the, the people who are pushing the, the envelope uh, as far as communication and as far as, you know, thinking goes. Uh, but eventually it reaches more and more people. Ultimately, most people are aligned with freedom. And we've really seen it here in Canada where I, I am. Uh, over the past couple of years, I, and you know, they keep talking about this like fringe minority, but ultimately, it's like a really good chunk of the of the population. And a lot of people have woken up. We're you know more than 10 million people for sure now, uh, out of you know 35, 40 million that are like you know totally. Uh, we're planning for hey, they're they're not going to enable us to trade in the future. They're going to block us from travel because we've already seen it. They've already done it. Yeah. And they're looking for more excuses to do it. They, they you know, the media uh, now is totally bought off and uh, promotes whatever agenda, uh, you know, those powers that be put out there. And uh, you can kind of just see how they're angling for another thing, whether it's monkey pox or some other BS thing that they're going to make up to try to, uh, you know, ultimately enslave people. That's really what it has been. Uh, you know, like we, we I, I hope we don't lose sight of what has happened over the past two years. You know, everything now, that whole narrative has fallen apart, all built on lies. They force people away from their family and friends. They, they force them to not be able to earn a living. They force them to not be free to travel. I mean, that's enslavement. Like it's, this is insane what has gone on. And, and, you know, just because it's letting up a little bit, I, I, I think we need to be prepared because the same people are still in control. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of scary because even if you go to Google something, you're not going to get the answer you're looking for. You'll see something else. Like, um, even if you look up something about Bitcoin, like, oh, Bitcoin's greatest achievements, blah, blah, blah. Like, you'll just see articles about how Bitcoin is negative. Um, that, like, especially, like, a year or two ago. Like, when I first created my Twitter account, April 2020, I was Googling Bitcoin, all of these things, and I was just getting, like, answers to questions I didn't even ask. You know what I mean? And that's why we need things like pre-search where we, we could Google, we, we could pre-search something, we could pre-something and we're going to get the right results. We're going to get something that isn't biased because you guys are literally filtering out the bias, which is pretty extraordinary on its own that you guys are really looking to delve into that because that's something that people would want to prevent what you guys are doing. Absolutely. I mean, uh, we, we haven't really encountered the resistance yet, but and, and, and the way that I'm hoping that this is going to roll out is that I, I mean, like if we can be like the Bitcoin of search, that's that's ultimately what we're, we're looking to do. And I don't think that, you know, we want that like central point of failure. Ultimately, like we want many forks of pre-search. We want, uh, you know, different uh, sets of defaults. We want to empower all these different communities to be able to kind of take this platform and, and run with it. And, uh, you know, some people might want a different bias and agenda, whatever. But uh, if as kind of the core, our culture and our community, we've really focused on bringing in people who value freedom, they value privacy, they value free trade, uh, then that's uh, kind of the, the, the set of default defaults, basically. And, uh, uh, you know, through them, yeah, we can kind of override some of that uh, 
spin and bias that's happening in the in you know the media in wikipedia in all oh, of yeah. these kind of legacy properties that are out there just you know kind of pushing this agenda and writing everything else off as a conspiracy theory exactly exactly well that's just got so deep i'm gonna roll the dice let's see who's gonna win um a zesty ballet wallet so we have Sushil, Sushil, are you here, my friend? If you're here, please write in the chat that you're here and send me a DM on Twitter. So let me just like write your name over here um, at Sushil. S U H. Yeah, there you go. Hey, friend, you won. Please send me a DM on Twitter. Yay. Congrats, Sushil. Yay. Okay. Let me just, I type so slow. I wish I could type like with my mind because I feel like I'd get a lot done here. Like I'm like multitasking up the wazoo right now. So, yeah. oh yeah, Sushil, you're in the chat, friend. Send me a DM on Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash Miss Teen Crypto um, and send me your email and I'll forward that to the ballet team after the stream and you'll get hooked up. They very much send them very quick. Have you ever had a ballet wallet? Have you run into these at any point? No, I gotta, I gotta check it out. It oh, sounds sheesh, awesome. Colin. You got to get involved. Ballet is great. I mean, it's it's one of the things that I think you would like as well because um, mm. it's like, you know, one of the first offline uh, multi-currency wallets. So, like, you, the private key is on here. Everything's on here. So, that way, like, it's just completely offline. You don't got to worry about storing the keys and anything. Like, you're if you're looking to give it as a gift. Wow. Um, but, yeah, ballet is super cool. I'm going to go buy cool. one. No, it's super, Thanks. super cool. Um, and they're they're very affordable. I think the lowest priced one is, like, $35. Bucks. Um, it's not even that bad. And But... Thanks definitely a cool asset to use especially like you know if you're looking to move or like you listen like a lot of people are actually leaving their homes in certain countries with the only yeah. the things in their pocket the only thing oh, yeah. you could really carry in your pocket in terms of cash or you can't ca you can't carry cash you can't carry gold what could you carry maybe one of these bad boys or your private keys like you know what i mean like absolutely sheesh man I know, like, yep. you know, I know there, there, we were talking about before the show, like, just a lot of people um, not being able to have the flexibility with their funds as, as they want to, right? So, like, is that, that, I feel like, I don't know, how can I word this? Is that something that's important to you, just being able to transact the way you want to transact? Because I know we were talking about that a lot before the show. Yeah, ab absolutely. And that is, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, with decentralized cryptocurrency, as opposed to like a central bank digital currency, that that is really uh, the key feature is, uh, you know, this, this uh, uh, unconfiscatability, uh, and yes. the, the ability to, you know, have total control of, of your own funds. Uh, it's super important and, uh, yeah, I, am going to check out this wallet. I just pre-searched it and, uh, they actually own ballet.com. That's a great domain name. Um, very interesting. I, I somehow had not heard of these guys. Uh, it, yeah. it looks pretty, pretty deadly. I actually had a uh, Bobby Lee, the CEO. He was on my show a little while back. So on my playlist, nice. you could, uh, check out the show with him. Super insightful. He okay. explains everything, how it all goes down. I like, this was very insightful. This chat, I really learned so much about pre-search today. I mean, I, I knew about pre-search, right? But I didn't know how zesty it was, especially with the nodes. Like, that's what I wanted to hear um, about the most, just because it's just so different than what a lot of people are doing. Um, just, like, being able to sign up for the node and being a part of the community and helping the network itself. Um, I, someone in the chat is asking right now, what is the next killer feature that you guys are working on at pre-search? Uh, so we, we've got something uh, called Community Packages, which is like an open source uh, platform that uh, people can contribute to the, the pre-search uh, user interface through. And, and so there's something called a, a knowledge panel, which is kind of like above the search results. If you go into pre-search and you uh, search for Bitcoin, for instance, you'll see like the crypto information package. It's got, you know, like a, a graph and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but we have the ability to basically trigger those things for just about any keyword. And ultimately, uh, we, we see that that's uh, one of the first ways that Google can really uh, uh, be defeated by or, or at least, you know, uh, that pre-search can uh, provide a, a better user experience than Google uh, by enabling, you know, thousands, tens of thousands, ultimately maybe millions of community members to build through these really simple uh, tools 
these these different packages that can reside on the actual search res search results page. And so uh, we're working on really building that out right now and encouraging community members to uh, do more development. So we're, we're launching a bounty program that uh, incentivizes people to go build all like the common ones that everybody wants, but ultimately enable the community to set up their own bounties so that they can say, hey, you know, I want a community package that has X and uh, it would be triggered by whatever the, the keyword is. And then it could actually have like on page results uh, that are, you know, really interactive uh, or that have, you know, alternative information sources and uh, provide people with just really quick information at their fingertips. So uh, I'm pretty pumped about that. And, and now that we've got mainnet out, uh, we're going to be shifting a lot of focus to that. And then kind of over time, you know, more and more of the focus is on just decentralization, governance, open source. And this is kind of one of those real uh, kind of paths for that to happen. So, like, I wanted to ask you, because this random thought just popped in my head, right? Domain names. Would you see yourselves getting involved in that as well? Because I know, like, I had to go through, like, GoDaddy or Name.com to go and buy my domain and then build a website, blah, blah, blah. Like, do you do you see yourself getting involved in that as well? Because I feel like domains, like, just going to buy a domain could be very expensive if they know there's a keyword in there that, that's pretty popular. Like, if you put anything with Bitcoin or NFT, like, it's going to be so expensive. So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, honestly, my background is in domains. That was kind of my my first uh, foray into digital assets. You know, they, it really was the original digital asset, domain names, something that people uh, can transfer between each other, and uh, exactly. you know, it has kind of an open registry. And honestly, like my thought was was that the internet was going to be all about developing domain names and that you know finding the highest best use for domain name uh would, would be really kind of the path to uh independent wealth on the internet and unfortunately it kind of went the other way where we went into like <laughs> yeah. centralized sharecropper type models with uh, all the big tech platforms but i i think yeah there's still a ton of potential there and uh i do see definitely ways that that pre-search could uh, really, you know, uh, focus more in that direction and enable the community to access, uh, you know, lots of different options. There's some really interesting decentralized domain names now, whether it's ENS or yeah. Handshake or Unstoppable Domains. And so, you know, there are ways that we could support that uh, through the platform and, and as well kind of elevate IPFS and, and, you know, more decentralized hosting of uh, information that is more resilient. Uh, but, you know, definitely it, it starts with kind of that user interface. And, and I think, yeah, I would yep. love to put out a challenge to community members to build, uh, you know, a community package that is uh, focused on domain names and all the uh, uh, cool opportunities within that space. And uh, uh, ultimately, you know, if we could contribute to an ecosystem that is more domain centric, I, I think we'd be all over that. Yeah, because I, I, it's so important, domain names. I, I, I really just wanted to get your thoughts on that because, you know, I think that owning our domains are so important. Like, you know, ENS, like you could transfer those, like, you know, have all the fun you want with those um, and sell them. I, it's just, it's so difficult to get a domain nowadays. Like, just like a .com or like, you know, just like I said, like you have a specific keyword, you're just going to like get jacked for it. But if you go on ENS, like that, like that's the stuff right there. Um, that's so awesome. Do you have your own um, ENS for pre-search at all? Uh, we, we do. We haven't really been uh, leveraging it yet, uh, pre.eth, but uh, yeah, that's definitely so cool. lots of plans for sure. Ooh, I'm so excited. Like that, that's great. Thank you so much for joining me today. There, I learned so, so, so much. Is there any, where can everyone find you? Where Are there any links you want people to click before heading out? I, I know I put your Twitter and presearch.com in the description of the show. So that's definitely there. Awesome. Yeah, no, just uh, aside from that, uh, t.me slash presearch on Telegram, uh, presearch.com, and then presearch.io is kind of like our information website. Uh, if you're curious more about, uh, you know, info behind the project. Cool. Let me throw all those in here real quick. So presearch.com is in here. Colin's Twitter is on there. Uh, T.me slash presearch is on there. So everything's on there. Shout out to Rice in the chat as well. Uh, yes. Rice, you are absolutely amazeballs. Thank you for showing up. Um, there's another great interview with Colin. 
with Rice on Rice's channel. So go click on his name after the stream ends. Go check out Rice's channel. He has amazing content for so long. I know uh, Presearch has been involved with Rice for the longest because um, you guys very ha you guys align in your ideas. And I feel like we align too. I feel like we, we're all very, we're all interconnected. I've known Rice for a really long time. Um, super great guy. So thank you to everyone that came as well. Um, there's a ton of new people from the Presearch community. I hope you guys enjoyed the show today. I will be doing another one this week. What's today? Tuesday. I will have another show on Thursday. That's going to be really fun. So like I said, guys, smash the likes, hit the subscribe, and share this stream out if you enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for coming. Benj Blaze, I know I saw you on Twitter. Um, Mara Juice, I don't know how to say your name right, but I'm going to assume that's the way. Thank you for joining. J Mac, as always. Randy, uh, Tom, Tom Allen, you're amazing. Greg, Mike, Simon, thank you to everyone that joined. I really appreciate you all. I hope you have a great day. Thanks again, Colin. Thank you, guys. I don't know. I, I, I'm like, it's like I don't want to end it because this was such a great conversation. Check out Presearch. I know I am. I'm going to go look up those nodes right now, actually. So thank you so much. Have a great day. And as always, stay zesty. Peace. Peace. Cool. Good morning, crypto Twitter. It's Misty Crypto spreading crypto without them showing this beneficial to my generation. Shout out to all my people. Jesse needs to be included. It's really Simple. We are savage and baseball zesty Making money at the same time, spread peace I feel empty if you don't include Gen Z